If you prick us, do we not bleed? If you tickle us, do we not laugh? If you poison us, do we not die? And if you wrong us, shall we not revenge? Okay, so that was Shakespeare. But in the realm of boxing and MMA history, I would like to talk about revenge and what I think is the greatest revenge in boxing history. On a moral level, on a physical level, and on a, I guess, an accolade level. Just to give the warning right now, yes, I am Puerto Rican. So it might seem like this is a kind of biased take, but I promise you it's not biased. And I think you'll understand why at the end of this video. From the mid 90s to the mid 2010s, there was a boxer named Miguel Cotto, a Puerto Rican boxer from Caguas, Puerto Rico. He was a hell of a fighter. If you're from the East Coast, you probably have heard him before. We'll get to all his accolades at the end of the video because I wanna talk about everything that happened in between, not everything, but the big event of his career that changed the course of his life and the rest of his career forever. In pretty much his early career, you could say the majority of his career, he was an undisputed champion at junior welterweight and welterweight. Welterweight is where he really shined. Uh, he had a lot of classic battles with Pauli Malinagi, Demarcus Corley, one with Zab Judah, Shane Mosley. Miguel Cotto was an overall feared kind of fighter. He was what you would call the boogeyman of the division at the time. A lot of people think that Floyd Mayweather ducked him in, in his early career, which is possible. We might talk about that another day. But I want to talk about another fighter that Miguel Cotto ended up crossing paths with to defend his title in welterweight. I believe it was WBA, Antonio Margarito. So Antonio Margarito was another fighter that fought professionally at welterweight. He started his pro career at 15 years old to be fighting pro fighters at 15. I give you credit on that. But from here, it's gonna go downhill for you, buddy. He fought Kermit Cintron. He fought a bunch of guys. From my research and just for me watching his fights and you know being a boxing fan, um, it doesn't look like he ever fought at any weight class under 147 or welterweight in general. At least I can't find it. He was a true welterweight, a very dangerous opponent in welterweight. Somebody that could also be considered another boogeyman. But by this time, when Cotto was defending his belt against Antonio Margarito, Cotto was a top fighter in the game. Right next, like probably shoulder to shoulder with Floyd Mayweather. If you know, you know. Margarito in 2008 vacates his IBF welterweight title and he challenges for Cotto's WBA welterweight title. Now this was a big fight that was billed and what's also behind it is the boxing and Mexico rivalry, which I will get into one day. But yes, there is a huge boxing and Mexico rivalry in, in the sport. Cotto was the favorite for this fight when he was defending against Margarito. He was the absolute favorite. When this fight takes place in 2008, from the first round, you can see that Cotto is moving beautifully. And also for the first few rounds, Margarito was able to, you know, establish his pressure, establish his power. He was landing some shots on Cotto, but really was playing catch up the whole time. And Cotto was landing numerous combos on his face, was really going to town on him dancing around him, stinging like a singing like a bee, moving like a butterfly, all that. Trouble would happen down the road in the fight where you would see Cotto start slowing down in like the fifth and sixth rounds. And then in the seventh round, you could see that um, the pressure that Margarito was putting on Cotto was starting to really break him. Around the seventh and eighth rounds, you could really see Cotto was fighting to survive, really fighting for his life. And it was surprising. A lot of people didn't really get how does Cotto landing all these combos on Margarito. Margarito's taking it with his granite chin. Kudos to that, you know, can't take that away from him. But it just didn't make sense how Margarito was able to land these shots, pressure Cotto into the corners, and just have his way, even after all of Cotto's footwork and his, uh, his offense that night. He went from dancing like a butterfly to just trying to get away. So Margarito's rallying back. He's putting his pressure on him. And in the 11th round, they actually stopped the fight because Cotto's offense is 
pretty much gone at this point and he's battered up. Cotto lost his belt and Margarito ended up taking his WBA title. So now he's the guy that beat the guy. Cotto's undisputed and undefeated record would end. Margarito would continue and he would end up defending his belt in the next fight, which ended up being a huge fiasco and started to reveal a lot of things that probably didn't make sense to the general public before with the with the Cotto fight. Moments before the Margarito and Mosley fight were supposed to happen, Nazim Richardson, the trainer for Shane Mosley at that time, went into Margarito's locker room and was watching the fighter get his hands wrapped. What he found was Margarito's trainer was putting a type of plaster that would harden up over time during the fight. And he was putting this plaster on the hand wraps of Antonio Margarito. Now, when Nazim Richardson found this, he obviously said something to the commission and they were able to pretty much catch Margarito red-handed trying to cheat. We, we know for a fact that Margarito was about to cheat when he fought Shane Mosley and then got caught and wasn't able to cheat. But it, it it's almost like people didn't believe that this was the first time. People believed that this wasn't the first time Margarito had done this. They just believed that this was the first time that he got caught. When people would think about the Miguel Cotto fight prior to this fight, they would they were thinking, oh, was was Margarito cheating for that fight too? Did he cheat against Kermit Cintron when he dropped him four times in a rematch, but didn't drop him in the first fight? They still ended up fighting that night. And Mosley, Shane Mosley, put on probably the best performance of his career by absolutely obliterating Margarito in every category. Shane Mosley was able to absolutely dismantle Antonio Margarito in embarrassing fashion. To make it even worse for Margarito, Shane Mosley is somebody that Miguel Cotto already beat in the past. So the boxing math wasn't adding up. How did Shane Mosley do this to Margarito? But Shane Mosley lost to Miguel Cotto prior. When they would think about the Miguel Cotto fight, there was now reasonable doubt to have that Mar Antonio Margarito cheated. To this very day, it would never be proven if Antonio Margarito really cheated against Miguel Cotto, but it didn't matter. And even to this day, it still doesn't matter because, you know, if you put one one and one together, it's going to be two. And this is pretty much a case of that. Cotto moves on. He has some wins, some losses, some wins, some losses, but then ends up earning a fight with Manny Pacquiao. And unfortunately, we'll get into that another time, but Unfortunately, Manny Pacquiao brutalized Cotto pretty bad. Pacquiao would be Margarito's opponent after Cotto. And this is where Margarito's karma would conceptualize and materialize in a physical form. Manny Pacquiao absolutely eviscerated Antonio Margarito. The result was a horrible loss for Margarito a loss where his orbital bone was actually destroyed and he needed reconstructive surgery for it. Miguel Cotto went up to, I believe, light middleweight, junior middleweight, and ended up taking a belt from Yuri Foreman, a really good Jewish fighter, really good fighter. But Miguel Cotto came back with a vengeance. Cotto now being on uprise again, I guess the promoters thought that they should make Antonio Margarito and Miguel Cotto number two. The rematch. This fight would take place for the WBA light middleweight title. And it was Cotto versus Antonio Margarito, 2011. From the first round, you could see Miguel Cotto looks, to me, he looked possessed. He looked like he was possessed with a like, with like a, a spirit of vengeance or something. He was fighting very similar to how he fought in the first fight, how he started it off. You know, maybe a little less footwork, and more sitting on his punches and and really taking a fight to, to to Margarito. But this time it was different. This time you could see that Cotto was specifically aiming for the side of Margarito's face that had already been destroyed by Pacquiao. Margarito was still 
fighting how he usually fights, how he tries to walk you down and pressure you and put power on you. But this time it wasn't working. Kodo was able to take these punches. Kodo was surprisingly able to take punches that he wasn't able to take in the first fight. At this point in the 10th round, Margarito's eye was swollen shut. He couldn't see out of it. Completely swollen shut. The doctor looked at it and said, hey, this man cannot fight. We got to stop this fight. And yes, it was the same eye that Pacquiao had obliterated before. Kodo defends his WBA title in another division and actually wins this time against Margarito in brutal fashion. This is why I consider this the most devious but greatest revenge in boxing history. The irony in all of it is insane. From it being the same title that they fought for for the first and second fight, but it's a different weight classes. The way that Margarito would lose to Mosley after Cotto and the way that the Pacquiao fight would injure Margarito so badly that it would set up Cotto for his victory. All of these things considered, Cotto just really focusing on that destroyed eye of Margarito for the whole fight, there's definitely a devious tinge to it. The karma that Mar Margarito faced was also well-earned because after this fight, you wouldn't see Margarito for a while. You wouldn't see Margarito for a while after this fight. While Cotto would keep going up and he would end up winning a middleweight title later near the end of his career, making him a four division title holder. With this rematch, Cotto absolutely got his get back. And he set off into the sunset as a legendary fighter while Margarito just ended up being a journeyman. So this is all a tale of karma. It's a tale of, you know, foul play and a tale of legends becoming legends in the end and journeymen becoming journeymen to me this is the greatest revenge in boxing history but also the most devious all right y'all y'all know the vibes it's dolo ren producer of the productive conversations podcast go follow me on my youtube channel man i'm about to start putting on these long format videos on my youtube channel so make sure y'all go subscribe to dolo ren on youtube but before you do that, please, please go subscribe to Productive Conversations Podcast on YouTube. We're also on Spotify, Apple. We're on every social media. You know, check us on TikTok, Instagram, all of that, man. We cover football. We cover basketball. We cover pop culture, social media culture. And I will be covering boxing and MMA for the channel. So like, subscribe, share, follow. Recommend to a friend. You know the vibes. I'll catch y'all next time.